there you guys i hope you're all doing well today i'm gonna be sharing with you my favorite jam recipe as of late also please excuse the heart monitor on my chest i have to wear it for two weeks so it's gonna be in a couple of my videos and it's very high up there so it's kind of hard to hide i covered as much as i could so let's just pretend it's a fancy schmancy microphone or something like that but if you want to hear more about why i have it it's in one of my recent vlogs i'll link that up above and down below as you guys probably know i bounce around with my obsessions throughout the year and this summer i have been overly obsessed with pie crusts then jam then i got out of it and moved on to salves now i'm kind of going in between oils and vinegars and also back to jams so I figured it would be a good time to just give a baseline overall recipe plus a more advanced recipe for my favorite jams. So this way it'll hopefully be easier to just direct people over here whenever I'm making vlogs with jam in it. Or future recipes, which there are a few coming soon, that involve jams. So. Today, I will be sharing with you my baseline jam recipe that is my grandmother's jam recipe, and then a little more of a spiced up version for the season. In general, jams are honestly very simple to make, and they always remind me of home. When I was a kid and I would go out in the summer for a couple weeks up to Washington with my grandparents, I would spend a huge amount of time in the kitchen making raspberry jam with my grandma. So jams always remind me of those wonderful moments in my childhood, and I just love them. They're very homey and amazing, and this is the perfect time of year to work on preserves, namely jams. Besides, jams are one of my favorite ways to infuse intention into my cooking. If you haven't noticed by now, I do enjoy crafting things that are pretty versatile. Something like a vinegar, a jam, or a honey you can make with infinite different possibilities. So you can infuse the energies and intent into them as you wish. Take blackberries, for example, which is what we are going to be using today. Blackberries main magical properties are prosperity, happiness, and protection. So infusing those energies into your cooking is always a wonderful thing. Personally, I am a little more about the emotional or physical side of magic and healing when you are doing kitchen witchery, so I would be most inclined to use the happiness property with blackberries, but you're welcome to try it out and experiment with new little things here and there. I do have a prosperity spell that involves this blackberry jam, and honestly, the way that I've seen best results with it is making these in addition to a conventional prosperity working. It just increases the energy and focus in a ritual. And very similar to the herbal honey I've shared in the past, jams can help set an intention. It's just a perfect little thing you can add pretty much anywhere your heart desires to set that magical intention for whatever you may need. So with all that spiel out of the way, let's get into how to make the baseline jam, or my grandmother's recipe. So for this, it is very, very simple. You need four cups of berries, one cup of sugar, plus one lemon, juice, and zest. You're welcome to add more sugar or less sugar depending on how sweet your berry is or how big of a sweet tooth you have. Feel free to experiment with that a little bit and this is really simply the baseline ingredient recipe that I use for all of my jams. Now, the one that I wanna share with you today, which is a little more exciting and just a little more spiced up, is the blackberry jam that I've been using as of late. And as we're pulling in our final harvests, I've been working really hard to preserve them, to just have that flavor throughout the winter, hence the jams. But because now all the warmer days are behind us and we're going to have our first fire this evening, which I'm so excited for, I wanted to flavor this jam in a way that evoked that wintry, cozy feeling. 
But anyways, beyond those initial ingredients for the baseline jam, you'll also need half a teaspoon of powdered ginger, one teaspoon of cinnamon, and half a teaspoon of ground cloves. Now, in the Northern Hemisphere, we have entered fall, or just about. The warmer days are behind us, each morning is all crisp and beautiful, and this recipe just feels perfect for the season. So I'm hoping you all will enjoy it as well. At least my Northern Hemisphere people. Southern Hemisphere people, you are welcome to enjoy it too. No rules here, no rules. But anyways, let's dig into how to craft it. Like I said before, jams are exceptionally simple to make. Basically, you throw everything in a pot, bring it to a rolling boil, and wait till it gels. But there are a couple tricks to that, so let's step through them. As I said, the first step is to throw all your ingredients in a pot. Then set it to a high heat and give it a good mix. I like to make sure that everything is as incorporated as it can be at this early stage and just kind of tend to it, get it looking all nice and together. Then bring it to a rolling boil and basically let it cook for a very long time. Typically I think this takes about 45 minutes to an hour, but I do think every stove would be a little bit different along with every berry. Your cook time is going to depend a lot on the water content of your fruit. Something with a higher water content is going to take a longer time to cook down because currently, essentially, while bringing it to this boil, you are just trying to wick away that moisture. So I can't really give a perfect cook time. Also, it is going to be different. The heat level that it needs to get to changes based on your altitude. So that also is different as well. I don't know the exact metrics on that, but if you Google it, it'll let you know. But anyways, you're gonna bring it to that rolling boil and let it cook for a good long while. Then once it begins to thicken up, this is when you can do this nifty little test to see if it's done and has reached a gelling point. Start by taking a couple of plates and place them in the freezer. Do this when you start cooking the jam down and just let them sit in there. Once the jam thickens up and you think it's begun to hit its gelling point, pull the plates out of the freezer and add just a little spoon of your jam onto the plate. Then run your finger through it. If it comes back together, it hasn't reached its gelling point, but if it stays in the separate little globs, you're golden. So once your jam has reached the gelling point, take it off the heat and set it aside. Then I usually let it cool just a bit before transferring it into a jar or anything of the sort. Now, if you're making blackberry jam, I would recommend taking out some of the seeds. It is an exceptionally seedy jam and, well, I'm not necessarily against seeds in my jam. Blackberries just have a lot, so in order to do this, I use a fancy vintage contraption that I cannot remember the name of currently, so I will write it here. It's supposed to come with a cone that goes in the middle, but I don't have that. I found that a wooden spoon works just as well, and I'll just press against the edges to get the jam through and the seeds stay in. Alternatively, you can use really anything that is a metal mesh to get rid of the seeds, but I'm very fond of this contraption, and if you're somebody that makes a lot of jams, highly recommend it. So once you're done getting the seeds out, or once it's cooled just enough, if it's not something that is overly seedy or you don't mind the seeds, take your jam and just add it to a jar, seal it, and you're golden. Some people do like to can their jam preserves. Personally, my family and friends and everybody that gets my recipes, they go through jams so quickly that there's really no reason for me to super preserve them 
and they last in the fridge for quite a while. So it's up to you if you wanna go the traditional route of actually canning your jams or just keeping them in the fridge if you're gonna use them within a good amount of time. And for those of you guys that ask me how long they last, I don't know for sure because they get eaten really quick. But that's basically it. It's very simple to make a jam. They are some of my favorite things to make. I really just find them to be so grounding and peaceful. And like I said, they are a really wonderful way to add intention to whatever you're doing. Simple intention building things like this, like tea or honey or jams, are one of my favorite ways to begin a ritual if I'm working towards something. Adding intention to your cooking and things like this allows you to just kind of add more layers and levels to spell work. And I mean, it can be the sole thing. Like I said before, and as I've said many, many times, I like using kitchen witchery and cooking if I'm not using true herbal medicine to help heal bodies emotionally and physically. I will be sharing a recipe that involves this jam that is mainly directed towards happiness here, I think next week or in the time to come, you'll see. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching my jam video. It is definitely a very easy, easy recipe, but I get a lot of questions about how I make them whenever I share them on my vlogs, in my, in my vlogs on my other channel. And I just thought it would be easier to have one video just to direct people to. So with that, thank you guys so much for watching. If you want to see more from me, go check out my other channel, which I've kind of already mentioned, but let's pretend I didn't. It is going to be linked down below. It's basically turning into a vlog channel, but I'm having a lot of fun with it. And also, if you want to help support this channel and that one, I would really appreciate it if you went and checked out my Patreon. There I share my art, among other things, with you all. Alrighty. Thank you so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you soon. Bye.